When working with objects in AutoCAD, you will need to select items that are already there. Most drawings will require that you select something. There are many different ways to select objects and to make sure you are selecting the right one. When you're using an editing command, you will see a prompt on the command line that says select objects. So if we have a circle and we want to do something to it, like copy, the command prompt on the command line and in your dynamic input say select objects. They aren't all listed here, but there are over a dozen options or so for you to be able to choose from when you want to make a selection, you know, for an object or objects. One method is to pick the object. We've selected it. You can tell you've selected it because it's been highlighted and dashed. I can zoom in here, but it still has the same type of dashed spacing. That's been selected. Now, if I press Escape key, I cancel my command and it's been unselected. That's pretty straightforward. And when there's only one or two objects, it's pretty easy to go and literally pick everything. So let's start the copy command. Pick it, press Enter. Now, since we're copying, I need a base point, And now I tell it where to place it. Now I have several circles in my command. Press Enter to close off the copy command. Now what if I want to pick, well, all of these, or maybe just, you know, these three. So if I want to copy it again, or in this case, let's say I want to erase. I need to select my objects. I can pick them one at a time and enter. Undo that. Control Z is a great way to quickly undo something. Or you can come up to your quick access toolbar. So the more objects you have to pick, the more you have to click. Now remember my theory on CAD here is that the less you do, the more you can get done. So two methods you can use here would be to use a window or a crossing window method. Okay, so let's say we want to erase again. Press enter, or the erase command is right here on the ribbon. Now I can pick all of these objects with just two clicks, or I can pick them one at a time. As you hover your mouse over an object to be selected, AutoCAD will highlight it. Say, hey, this is what you're picking. That's how you know that you're picking the right object or not. One thing you can do is called a window. I pick a point here just in space, and you can see I have two different colored windows. This is your window selection method. And there are two methods right here available to us. As I move my mouse to the right, up or down, of my first point, I get a blue box with a solid boundary around it. This is your window selection. Anything that is fully enclosed inside that window will be selected. So I'm going to get this circle and this circle in my selection. Watch. There you go. See, they were the only ones that were completely enclosed in that blue square area. That's your window. Now, the other option was a crossing window selection. So I can pick somewhere, and when I move to the left of that selection, up or down, I get a green box with a dashed line. Now that means that anything that's completely inside that square will be picked, as well as anything that square crosses through. So now I'm going to pick this circle, this circle, this circle, and then this one on the bottom. The only one that's completely enclosed in my rectangular shape is the bottom circle, but yet all four will be selected. They will be added to my selection of these other two objects. These are your two main selection methods, your window and your crossing window. The third one is probably the individual object selection itself. So you can very quickly pick everything with two clicks. That's very handy. Sometimes, though, you have to get fancy, and you want to pick just the right objects. If you want to select all the objects in your file, for whatever reason, you can just start your command, and then type in the word all. And this will pick everything, and it will tell you on the command line how many objects you found or were selected. In this case, there's eight. So that's another way. Another really cool selection method works just like your crossing window selection, but instead of a polyline or square or rectangle, it's just a straight line. So you start your command, 
and you hit the letter F for fence. Press enter. And now you just connect the dots. Pick anywhere and you have this crossing line. Anywhere that crossing line goes, the object will be selected. So I can pick these three objects. I'm going to ignore this one. Pick that one and that one. So everywhere that line goes through, those are the objects that I'm going to select. And the other three that I haven't crossed through with my fence won't be picked. I press enter and they're gone. So when you are in a tight configuration or you have a lot going on, you can use the fence option. Set control Z again to undo that erase. Now this works just like the crossing window except that you make a line, not a box. Okay, there's another one called the W polygon and the C polygon methods. These create a windowed or crossing polygon. So it's kind of a hybrid of your crossing window or window selection with a fence. These methods will allow you to create a multi-sided object as your selection area instead of a box. In all honesty and fairness though, I almost never use these methods myself because the window, the crossing, the fence, and the single selection will fit almost all of my needs. But we'll try them out anyway, just to demonstrate. Press erase and then WP. Now you just draw your polygon. So I can draw a really crazy shape. As you can see, anything inside will be selected. And right now, I have nothing that's inside my window because I've made a weird shape. So now the only thing that's going to be erased will be the circle here. So that's the WP selection. The other selection option is the C polygon for crossing window polygon. If I type in CP, now you can see I have my selection options here. Anything that crosses through will be picked. There you go. And as you saw there as well, I can use any combination of these selection methods. I can keep adding to my selection until I've picked everything I need. So sometimes you may want to just pick an object, pick an object, and then do a window, whatever your needs might be. And then you could do a fence, etc. But sometimes, sometimes you pick too many things and you need to remove these items from your selection. It happens. It happens all the time. There are two ways to do this. Once you've made your selection, let's just say I've picked everything, and I say, oh, I need to take the one out right in the middle, this guy. How do I get rid of it? Hit the letter R for remove. Press enter, and now pick. Now it's out of my selection. You see it's not highlighted, it's not dashed. Everything else here is. Now you have to turn this feature off, though, if you want to add more items. And you can use all of your regular selection methods that you use to add things to it with. So you hit R for remove, and now you want to type A for add. So now that I've typed in A for add, I can start adding objects back to my selection set. That's one method, the R method. And the second method, which is my preferred method, is to just hold down the shift key. So again, if I have everything picked, I press and hold the shift key, and then I just pick my other objects. Let go of the shift key, and I can start adding objects back. I like that because I only have to do a couple of steps and I can do it on the fly. So I can remove, remove, oh, let go of the shift key and start adding again. So your shift key is very helpful there. There are many times when you make a selection and finish a command, and now you need to use that same selection set for whatever reason. So let's say I'm going to copy these three circles. Press enter, and I've copied them. Now let's say I want to delete those three, or you know what, I need to copy some more of those objects. Start the copy command again, press enter, and hit P. P will select your previously selected objects. That's very nice. I don't have to figure out exactly which ones that I picked before. I can just start back where I was. Many times you're going to find that selecting the right object is difficult. And this could be because there are several objects on top of each other or that they're just so close to each other you can't get the right one. So let's start the copy command again. And I'm going to go with the previous. I'm going to pick the center of this circle. I'm going to add them on top of these sets of circles. 
Now, which one do I want to delete? I don't want to delete both of them, but I want to delete the other one. There are a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can cycle through the objects, which is what you want to do. To do this, place your crosshair over the object, just like I've done here. You'll see it highlighted, and then hold the shift key down and press the space bar. You can see it kind of flashes there. That will toggle through the different objects. So you'll get to pick the one that you want. You can also turn on what's called selection cycling, which is right here in your status bar. Turn that on. And when you hover over objects that have more than one object on top or underneath, you'll get that little blue glyph that you see in, it, in the top right corner of my crosshairs. It says, hey, there's more than one object here. So when I pick the object, it will say, hey, there are two circles. Which one do you want? You pick the one you want and start your command. And now there are only two objects here. One way to test if there are more than one object over the top of each other is by just selecting them. You can select objects before you start your command. That's also useful. Work whichever way you want. I find that I have developed a work habit of selecting objects, then performing my command. You can do it either way. It really doesn't make much difference. When I select here, I only have one object, and I know I only have one object because I've moved it. But if you execute a command like copy or erase, and you pick it, it says one object found. Now if I go here, I'll say two found, three total. So I have three objects in total selected. And as I add to that selection, the total increases. If you press the F2 button, you'll get your text screen here, and it will show you how many you have selected so you'll know what's going on. Remember, you can select your objects before you start your command, or you can start the command and then select it. It's up to you.